Immortality is a game about clicking on random things in a movie clip and then having it cut to a different movie clip. That's it. If that sounds boring and repetitive and a pretty dreadful central mechanic, you'd be right. This is what you do for five hours. Click, 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 click. Apples, people, paintings, you can click on an arse at one point, but it doesn't change the fact that all you're doing is click. Whose toes are those? Who's that great ape right there? It's also one of the best games I've played this year. Are you wondering how a game where clicking on a dude's face four times in a row is considered gameplay is on the same level for me as Elden Ring? Well, it's, it's quite simple actually. You see, Immortality is in fact a game about clicking on random things in a movie clip and then having it cut to a different movie clip, yeah. But it's also a mystery game. And I'm a bitch for mystery games. Outer Wilds, Return of the Obra Dinn, Throw Hypnospace Out or in there as well, are games with underwhelming, uninteresting mechanics. Outer Wilds is a space exploration game where 90% of the time you're holding down mouse one and reading. Oberdin is a game about filling out insurance paperwork. Hypnospace Outlaw is about reading blog posts. These aren't games that thrive off of their gameplay. They thrive because the quality of their writing or the reveal of their mystery or the sheer act of problem solving itself is so brilliantly polished and satisfying that it leaves you fucking awestruck by the end. Immortality is the same. It's a mystery about this actress that appeared in three separate films that were never released and why she went missing. You're handed a bunch of unedited footage from those three films and asked to collect as much of it as possible by doing this. The actual act of collecting evidence isn't the fun part. It's barely even a game mechanic. There's not much for or detective intuition in picking a pair of scissors over a face or a mirror. It's not exactly an emergent gameplay system. You're not really guiding the game as much as gently prodding it. Sometimes you'll get a new clip that develops the mystery, sometimes you'll get the most pointless shot going, and a lot of the time, you'll get a clip you've already seen. A whole lot of it is bashing your head against a wall, wondering what you're missing, why the fuck they design it this way, where Sam Barlow lives so I can murder him with a pair of scissors. The fun part, like any of these games, is figuring it out. When the pieces start to fall into place and you feel like Benedict Cumberbatch for working it all out by yourself. The cool thing that Immortality does is that instead of just having one mystery to solve, with everything else being set dressing, you have four. What happened to Marissa Marcel, and what's the plot of all these movies? You don't get a summary, you don't even get a sentence telling you what these are about, unless you read the store page. You get a title, a year, and that's it. Work it out, idiot. So instead of hopping between clips, waiting to stumble across one that has anything at all to do with the central mystery, every clip is valuable because every clip is a piece of the puzzle. You don't end up with the whole movies, you get the bits and pieces that the restoration team could scrounge up, which means one close-up for an entire scene, a rehearsal instead of the actual footage, clips with multiple takes in one shot, or just nothing at all. A lot of it is guesswork, trying to fill in the gaps in your head while waiting for a relevant clip to show up that asserts your suspicions, or adds another layer to the puzzle. You'll go from, oh, this is a period piece Christian film, to, oh, this is a movie about the occult, to, oh, the director just wanted an excuse to see some tits. The one thing that really elevates this above other games of its ilk is that everything you're looking at feels so real and authentic and not a parody of itself. You never lose that feeling of immersion that what you're staring at is lost media, a film genuinely shot in the 60s or the 70s or the 90s because everything about the production, from the acting to the cinematography to the themes, is so faithful to the era that it's an homage to. I love seeing split diopter shots, or crude in-camera VFX, or the low-budget fuck-the-system style of Minsky. It's faithful to the level where it even emulates the things that kind of sucked about each era, Ambrosio is studio to a fault and boring as sin, Minsky feels like a student film given a higher budget, two of everything is so far up its own arse you come out the other end. These are not good movies, but that's kind of the point. This isn't so much a tribute to different eras of film, as it is to different eras of filmmakers. When you watch a clip, you don't watch the trimmed down version that would have been seen in the finished piece. You get the untouched rushes, you get to see the AD come into an end slate, or hear the director have a go at the cast, or an actor forgetting their lines. There's an entire other layer to appreciate here beyond the movies themselves, and this feels just as authentic as everything else. 
You'll see the director planning out a shot on a location scale, asking where the sun rises and sets, then two hours later unlock that same shot and see it actually played out for real. The process is as much a part of what makes these movies feel real as the movies themselves. It's not just a bunch of footage shot by some game designers in the 2020s that are trying to emulate different eras of film. You are watching people that lived in those time periods trying to make movies. Oh, sorry. We're the wrong way around. Keep rolling from the top. It's so fucking cool. And this is when I realized, hang on, all these realistic rushes and the way they're presented in this grid in shot order and the interface itself, I'm fucking editing. Not literally, obviously. A minigame doesn't pop up once you've found all the shots in a scene where you're tasked with deciding where a close-up should go, and you don't have to deal with, you know, this. But fundamentally, these two have a lot in common. Editing is already a problem-solving exercise, especially when you're putting together a movie with different angles and insert shots and takes that somehow need to be turned into a finished thing. What takes the best? How long should this shot run for? How do I manage to cut around the old man staring at the camera in the background? The entire thing is a balancing act of turning a bunch of tiny insignificant pieces into a larger whole. And that's exactly what you're doing here. You're not physically editing the pieces together, but in your head, as you watch through these scenes and slowly unlock more pieces of each film, you're subconsciously doing the same thing. This scene happens here, and then this shot leads into that, which leads into this beat, and so on. You start to fill in the gaps in your head for where the missing footage would have gone, and where each cut would happen. The interface itself prods you to approach it like this too. It's literally designed after an old moviola, sounds and all. Obviously, mileage will vary massively here. If you think editing is boring as shit, this will not be fun for you. And likewise, if you've never edited in your life, then it's not going to have the same effect. But if you're Walter Murch, or me, then this will be the coolest thing ever. And if that was it, then this would still be one of the best things I played this year. There's so much love and care poured into so much of this game that it's worth it just to appreciate the quality of it all. Will everyone love this? No. As much as I've harped on about how good this shit is, if you don't care about filmmaking, this will be boring as fuck. And if the thought of doing this for five hours pisses you off, then you might as well throw the whole thing in the bin. I, I don't blame you. But if you're a prick, like me, you'll probably enjoy this, at least a little bit. But then, and this is heavy spoilers, please stop watching if you care even the slightest bit about playing this, I mean it. As you're sitting there, watching through these clips, something else happens. Hey, what's up? Sometimes, while watching a clip, you'll hear a faint buzzing in your left ear. Splash thing? And if you rewind the reel, you might catch a glimpse of something. Faces change, someone standing in a dark room, but you probably won't be able to see any more than that. The game doesn't tell you what this is. There isn't a tutorial pop-up, the marketing and the storefront barely even hint that this is a part of the game. You just randomly stumble across them. So you have to figure it out yourself, wrangle with the controls, scan back and forth, trying to get it just right, and then... <laughs> the entire game flips on its head. Turns out, there's another mystery in here. If you weren't already preoccupied with every other plot thread you were keeping track of, you now have this nice lady to deal with. A ton of clips have a subverted video embedded into them that only appear when you rewind at the exact right moment. Most of the time, these are one-for-one -one matches with the original version, but instead of Marissa, you got this babe, and instead of a nice homage to an era of cinema, it's creepy as shit. Turns out, this is also a psychological horror game, where nothing that scary happens. She doesn't randomly appear while you're watching a table read and go boo. But every time I find one of these clips, I want to crawl out of my own skin. The sound design of this light buzz that you might not even notice while you're watching a video slowly becomes embedded into your head as you watch clip after clip and it just keeps getting more fucked. Here's a video where she's monologuing about the Great War in a black void. Here's a video where she's threatening to murder the director. Here's a video where she's making out with one of the cast members. Here's a video where she's getting rammed while staring you dead in the eyes. It just keeps getting more and more twisted, each new video opening up a whole new raft of questions. Namely, what the fuck? And what the fuck? Some clips are pretty normal, just the exact same as the original but she's there instead. But then right at the end, she stares at you. In every fucking video, she's glaring at you, dead in the eyes, and it never stops being creepy. 
Is she aware of my existence? Or is she just looking at the camera? I don't know, but I don't fucking like it. I feel like she's gonna jump out of the screen at any moment and murder me. This shit is so chilling. The music doesn't help either. This cacophony of noise that builds as the clip goes on that makes me feel like I'm slowly losing my mind. And they just keep building off of this. As the clips from the real world start to get darker and darker, the subverted versions continue to add more layers. Here's someone else, now she's taking the role of two people at once, now clips can have more than one subversion. And she's still fucking staring at you. You feel like you're looking at something that you never should have seen. Something that should have been locked away for good, but is being brought back to life by the sheer act of you engaging with it. But you keep watching. You can't look away. This mystery is so embedded into your head at this point that you can't not think about it. And as you unlock more and more footage, rewatch scenes with a fresh perspective, descend further and further into the rabbit hole, the pieces start to slowly fall into place. And just as it all starts to click, you unlock a video of a burning chair. And the game twists again. I see. 10 out of 10, I shit myself. <laughs>